back to Bill Carroll on Talk Radio AM 640. The Pink Diamond Fundraising Gala Luncheon is coming up this weekend. You can go to afterbreastcancer.ca to find out more about it. There's a link on the AM640 Facebook page as well. This is the event I've been telling you about where uh, you can bid for and possibly become a co-host on this show. Join me in the Chorus Key Studios and co-host an hour of the show. I hope somebody listening is going to bid on that. Pay a lot of money. It's a great cause. And uh, the woman who started this luncheon and this great cause is a woman that I happen to know who wants who wants to find a way to make women who've who've survived breast cancer feel better about themselves. She uh, she works in a she works she owns a store that sells women bras, and this can be a can be very difficult to get a good fitting bra after you've had breast cancer surgery. So it's an amazing and really important issue. And I also happen to know the guest speaker. Her name is Susan Fulford. I met her while hosting on this show, it's got to be 15 years ago. At that time, she was working as a labor lawyer. And we were talking about labor law issues like we did uh, actually in the last hour of the program about severance pay. Uh, She's no longer practicing law, but she's now a financial advisor. One of the smartest people I've ever met, one of the nicest people I've ever known. And uh, our family reconnected with her when she was expecting her beautiful son, Harrison, to be born. We ran into her in the hospital, and we became close friends again. And we were devastated to learn that Susan was fighting breast cancer. But she's a survivor, and she will tell her story at this event. How you doing, Susan? I'm great, Bill. How are you? Good. I, and now I have to talk to you on the radio for you to have a conversation these days. That's all right. I'm excited to be bidding on the co-host <laughs> opportunity for your show. I'm going to bid that up huge. Oh, you'd be great at that. The only problem is I won't let that happen because then uh, the only way I'm going to get on radio is I, if I bid to co-host with you because you'll take the show away. <laughs> it's too incestuous. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I wonder why uh, people after they've fought and defeated cancer, why they get involved publicly. I mean, why agree to be a guest speaker? I, I don't know. I think I'd be tempted to just want to put it behind me and not think about it again. So what makes you stand up in front of a group of people and relive the experience? I think there's a, a couple of reasons, and I think most importantly, it's an opportunity to give back and help other people going through this journey to help restore their dignity and to make a difference. That's obviously, at least for me, the the driving force behind it. And, you know, I did take some time off. It's been uh, two years since my last treatment, and And I think now I'm really prepared to be more transparent with my experience and my journey, particularly if I can make a difference in somebody else's life and offer a great cause like after breast cancer, the support it needs and maybe the face it needs to make the journey more um, transparent to other people in the community. Well, I know every time we learn that a friend has breast cancer and unfortunately seems to happen too much, first thing we do is here's Susan's phone number. (laughs) <laughs> Give her a call, and I know you've helped so many people one-on-one go through uh, go through a very difficult time in their lives. I got only one email criticizing this Pink Diamond fundraising gala idea, and it said, I don't know, women have just gone through breast cancer. A good-fitting bra doesn't seem all that important given all of the other challenges. I think they're wrong. How would you answer that question, though? You know, it's, it's not something that is readily apparent to the the average person out there that's familiar with the breast cancer cause. What is important and what is, you know, of actual integral importance is helping these people get back up on their feet again and re-engage into society, not just from a personal point of view, but from a business point of view, and also the, the face that they can put forward to the outside world and to their families. If you think about the number of women that have children and maybe young children like, like I did at the time, presenting that healthy self again after such a harrowing journey that takes a physical, physical and visible toll on the body is, becomes important not just to the other people seeing them but to their own sense of self-esteem. No, that's well put. So it's not just how you feel about yourself. It's how you present yourself to the world and then how they react to that. I remember the day I walked into my office uh, when I was back to work a couple days of a week, and I was wearing a prosthetic at the time. And, you know, it's not obvious to the people in the office when you have a business suit on what's going on underneath. But my manager stopped me and just said, wow, he goes, you look so healthy. I'm so happy to see this. And I thought, 
that's the difference a good bra can make in business. Yeah, because people don't, we're not comfortable being around people we think are, are not well. We, we kick into caretaker mode instead of respect mode. And in the business world, you don't want people feeling sorry for you. They want You want them to see who you are, who you were before, and deal with, with you like cancer was not an issue. Well, and that's what, you know, the oncological team will tell you. They'll say, walk out the door and forget this ever happened. And you're like, I would like to, except I'm bald and breathless. Right. <laughs> And if I, I other than those things, people, no one will yeah. ever suspect anything is going on. <laughs> yeah, I think unfortunately, cancer is becoming so prevalent, particularly breast cancer in, in our world. It's you know the numbers and the frequency with which it occurs is staggering. So I remember my dad told me, "You're not the first. You're certainly not the last. So don't wear a wig if you don't want to." And I didn't. But I've got to say, I think it makes other people's approach to you more challenging and awkward. I was quite comfortable with it, but I think more people felt awkward as a result of my choice. There's a great picture of you and uh, Sylvie, my wife, on the beach together in Georgian Bay right after uh, you had, I guess, yeah, you'd had the surgery yeah. and you were totally bald. And as I told you at the time and I meant it, you were without doubt the hottest, sexiest, bald woman I ever met in my life. And people see that picture and go, wow, that woman is gorgeous. Uh, but it was, I think what the, we see in your eyes is the fighter that you were. And uh, that's why we love you, because you can't keep Susan Fulford down. No way cancer was ever going to kick your ass. Well, and I think that's, you know, you, you just hit on a really important point that's really important for anybody who's newly diagnosed to understand we are so fortunate, you know, in Toronto to live in a, a city with so many centers of excellence around health care, but they're making cancer a manageable health, like a chronic health situation as opposed to a terminal illness. So anything we can do to support that effort and to support the patients going through it and to make their life after breast cancer easier to ramp them up faster and to jump start them back into a healthy normal life well i'm all in on that cause thank you susan good luck on the weekend i know you're gonna be great thank you you too susan fulford is the guest speaker at the pink diamond fundraising gala luncheon this sunday you can find out more by going to the AM640 Facebook page or directly to afterbreastcancer.ca. I know there are still tickets available for that luncheon. Not going to take a lot of time out of your day, but you just heard Susan. She's uh, smart. She's going to be funny. Uh, it's not going to be some dire, dark event. It's going to be a great time, and there are great, uh, great things to bid on, including a chance to co-host this show for an hour in the beautiful Queen's Key uh, Studios, uh, Chorus Key Studios. On the waterfront, I got to tell you, if you haven't been in the building, it's it's worth it just to just to come in and get the tour. What an incredible facility! So you're going to enjoy that. Sure, you're going to have to put up with me for an hour, but uh, and I'm I'm going to be mailing it in. Whoever bids for this, I'm putting my feet up. You are going to do all the tough work, believe me. The Pink Diamond Fundraising Gala Luncheon this Sunday after breastcancer.ca or go to the AM640 Facebook page. You can find out how much are the tickets. $75? That's not expensive at all. But it's a great cause. 75 bucks. So uh, good luck on the weekend, and please bid to be on the Bill Carroll Show. I'm begging now. Look bad otherwise. Why are we changing the name of Father's Day or Mother's Day? What, what's that about again? We'll get into that coming up next. Talk Radio, AM 640, Toronto. AM 640, chopper traffic for FedEx.